Hello and welcome to a video where you had some questions and I got some answers to give you, commonly known as Q&A. What we are going to do today, aside from talking and talking and talking, is I'm going to take care of my violets. They are, you turn here, behind the tent, and that's where the violets are. They're on top of my mail's book cabinet, and I'm just gonna give you a bit of an introduction here. They have not been watered in quite some time, in more time than you can probably imagine. So, you know, it's been probably two weeks, or maybe even three. That's not great. So don't expect them to look amazing, but I kind of wanted to take care of them last week, and I was actually recording a vlog during the entire last week and I don't know, I just didn't like it. I don't know, was it the angles or something? It just didn't look good. So I decided not to even finish editing it. And also it was Easter for a majority of you. So I just, you know, I'm, I was giving you a break. I was giving you a break, but I did a lot of stuff in that video. I took care of my hoya wall, you know, they got watered and I need to be watered again. Shocking, it's been a week. I also wanted to do something with the violets and I just didn't get around to doing that. That is the excuse for why they haven't been watered last week. Why haven't they been watered before that? No excuse, I don't know. I probably will not talk a lot about violets and violet care, just because, you know, it's not that kind of a video. Also, you probably don't care. <laughs> so I'm just gonna try to answer to as many questions as I can. I'll try to be brief. We all know I can talk. So this time I will try to be brief. There are a Think about 80 questions. I'm not going to answer all of them. You've been very good and it hasn't even been 24 hours. So I really apologize to people who post after this. I think it kind of slowed down with the, with the questions. So that probably means that no one else wants to know anything. Okay, so we're back with the violets. I had to turn on my dehumidifier. I really hope you cannot hear that. I'm sorry if you can pretend it's a white noise machine. So, you know, anyways, the just the state of neglect. You can kind of see here. We need to separate this violet. It needs to be watered. I also need to check some of them for thrips. So I'm just gonna start to do that and I will look at your questions. I wasn't joking when I was saying that this is under what? Why, why is there pumice in here, you poor thing? Anyways, I'm just discovering how inadequate this mix is for this plant. What is an easiest thin leaf Hoya in your opinion? There are several thin leaf Hoyas that are very easy and if I would have to pick some that ship reasonably well and that are reasonably easy to grow I would say Hoya Loki and Hoya Multiflora. I would avoid plants like Hoya Praetori, Hoya Lasianta. I don't think those ship very well. My Hoya Praetori arrived to me in a couple of days and it was already dehydrated. I have never tried with Hoya Lasianta, but I have been advised by Camilla not to get that one because it doesn't ship well. Avoid Hoya Medinillifolia also if you are just, you know, looking for something easy for the first time. I wouldn't get Hoya Medinillifolia. It's an expensive and stressful plant. Also, it depends where you draw the line at thin-leafed Hoyas. If you think Hoya Lobby is thin, in my opinion, not really, then you can also try with that one. That is an easy Hoya to grow. Vaporizer or humidifier, which is best for plants? I don't know what vaporizer is, so I'm just gonna Google that. So vaporizer boils water and releases it into the air as steam. A humidifier uses an ultrasonic part to diffuse the water into mist or a fan that creates a mist. Okay, they use different methods to do so. Okay, vaporizer. Steam may be hot enough to burn skin. I don't know if this is true. I'm just like looking at the website that I found first. So I would say humidifier. I honestly have never heard of anyone using a vaporizer in the plant community. So I'd just say get a humidifier. I'd like to stir the pot and ask for unpopular opinions. I also like to give unpopular opinions. I don't know. I have a lot of opinions. Uh, <laughs> I don't think you get to hear them. Most of the time, it's unfortunately my friends that get to hear my unpopular opinions. So, you know, I apologize to them for that, but you know, maybe they love it. Trying to divide this is not as easy as I thought it would be. I mean, honestly, I don't think I have ever divided a violet, so first time. Okay, I'm gonna remove the flowers because I just think it's the best course of action here. I'm trying to think about my unpopular opinions. Oh, you know what's an unpopular opinion that I have? Moss balls ain't that great. Sorry, 
that is really my opinion. Everyone is crazy about moss balls. I just, you know, I tried them. To me, they are a lot of work. I don't like them. Maybe it works for you if you don't have a big collection. It just did never, never really worked for me. Never liked them. This one fell out of the pot many times, so we'll see what is left here to save. Could we see more vlogs? The adventures are fun. Yes, there will be more vlogs. You know, I tried to film some last week. I'm filming some right now. So, you know, there will definitely be more vlogs. I actually like vlogs. Potentially even a little bit more than the sitting plant content. I don't know how the rest of you feel, but, you know, that is how I feel. And it's my channel, so... <laughs> I am not here to fulfill anyone's wish. Well, I am. I am. But, you know, I do like them. I, I didn't like them before. But honestly, I started to like them because of a singular YouTuber. I mentioned her before, Caroline Winkler. And, you know, anyone who has any issue with me making more vlogs, leave a comment on her channel. Blame her, not me. Oh no, what is this in the crown? Okay, it's just some soil. See, I don't even know where this... what is happening. No one knows. So, this is not going well. This particular one is not looking well. So what happened here is they just, there were like several plants and they all got tangled. So we'll just have to start with very small plants again. Root mealybugs without cutting the plants down. I am sorry to disappoint you, that is just most likely not going to happen. I have looked into many solutions and a lot of you have suggested many things like spraying the plant with neem oil or spraying the roots with neem oil. I, I'm really not confident that it's gonna work because I really haven't found any proof that it does. And I have read extensively about the root mealybugs. So it seems that, you know, one of the reasons why it's so difficult to kill them is even when you kill adults, there are eggs that you don't kill. And, you know, they just hatch and start enjoying your plant again. Very nice, right? What I do is I just restart the plant. I, again, I'm having some root mealybugs issues that I still have not taken care of, which is one of the questions. I really don't know what to do here because I have two violets here as well. The only thing that I have been able to find on internet, and they also said that kind of has a limited effect, is some of the insecticides. And I think they have been mentioning something like Confidor, so something from the neonicotinoids. Not really sure on the pronunciation there. So I think it's just really the easiest thing for you to restart them. All right, I was interrupted there for a moment, so... What I was saying about the root mealybugs is I don't think you're gonna get rid of them that easily without cutting the plant. That is just the easiest. And I know it is very inconvenient when you have to cut down a big plant. Trust me, I had to restart my Hoya collection when I had around 120 perhaps Hoyas. Wasn't fun and some of them were big, but it's just what you have to do. You can try the warm water method. I did get a sous vide to try it out. I still haven't because I just didn't have the time and a lot of the big ones actually don't have root mealybugs. I found them on some smaller ones which I'm supposed to take care of and I will just restart those because uh, experience from the warm water, water method is that most of them will actually survive but some of them might end up being damaged, especially the more sensitive ones. Now, I don't really know which ones are the most sensitive. We just don't have the same growing experience. For example, I, for me, Hoya Prickti doesn't really grow well. For the rest of the people, it grows fantastic. I don't know why it doesn't grow well for me. That's going to be a rant in my upcoming vlog, probably. I think I probably wouldn't say that some of the Hoyas are sensitive that other people would say they are. So, you, you could try that, and the trick with that, I was told by May April, who has done that treatment extensively, is that you should, first of all, that it helps if the Hoyas are hydrated, it helps if you remove most of the substrate, and then when you dip them in, in the warm water, try not to get the leaves inside, because it can, they can be damaged, and after the warm water, put them in temperature room water. Then leave them out, don't pot them right away, let them to dry out and then pot them. She said she had the most success like that. I still haven't tried it, but, you know, just so you know. This is another one that fell out and I just don't really know what to do with this. It's, again, very impractical growth pattern here. I need someone with more delicate fingers to work on these violets. I'm certainly not the one. I had my friend here, she would do such a great job. So Diana, if you're watching, 
I wish you could have done this because you would be more gentler. F. Mary kill. Flat mites, thrips, or root mealybugs? Kill root mealybugs, definitely. F. Flat mites and Mary thrips. I could live with thrips. They're disgusting though. That's an awful question. How dare you? Oh, I hate that. How bad is repotting Hoyas that have small roots? I really dislike plastic pots. I get new ones in. I don't think it's a bad idea. I have never had any issue with repotting a Hoya with small roots. I typically, you know, if I receive them in something that I just don't grow my Hoyas in, I will repot them. In my opinion, if you're careful, it's not a bad thing. And also, Hoyas are really easy to root. There are a couple of exceptions, but most of the time they're just very easy to root. So I wouldn't worry about it. I just feel we should all stop being so hysterical about rooting Hoyas. What is your most melodramatic Hoya? I would say my most melodramatic Hoya is Hoya Thuanthian Hoensis. I don't know why, again, it shouldn't be. It just didn't travel really well and it never really recovered. I keep waiting for it to grow a couple of leaves so I can take a cutting, but it just, its it grows so much and none of those are leaves, I just think. I just think I need to get a new cutting, you know. I have been very patient. That one and Samamaniana, if I pronounce that, it's trash. This portion of the video is sponsored by Mars Hydro. As you know, I have been using Mars Hydro Grow Lights and Grow Tents for over two years now, and I have been very happy how my Hoyas and other plants have done. They grow faster and my Hoyas bloom much earlier than they used to. I still make some mistakes because using grow lights does entail a certain learning curve in terms of just how much light our houseplants need, but overall they are all healthy, happy and thriving. I have three of their grow tents in three different sizes, but I also grow my Hoyas outside of the grow tents using their lights, like on my Hoya grow wall where they also thrive, provided I water them on time. I also use the lights for my aeroids and they have gotten seriously massive. I use several of their grow lights on my plants, TS600, TS1000, FC3000 and FC4800. If you want to get a grow light or a grow tent for yourself, make sure to use the code BASYPLANTS for a small discount. Thank you Mars Hydro for sponsoring this video, and now let's get back to the Q&A. How did you get started on Hoya and is there one you won't get again and why? I think I will not get again Hoya Australis, the regular one, probably Lisa. I just don't have a great experience with that, those plants. I don't love them and I don't think I'm gonna get them again. I don't think I'm gonna get any of the Areostemas, but you know, if I do, don't judge me, but you know, they're just not a great time. Hard to bloom and grow very big, very, very big. Maybe I would like to try Gigas, but that's because it's like a challenge. My whole sunrise is not loving pond. How do I transfer to another substrate? Honestly, I feel the best thing that you can do for yourself is just root it again. If it's not too big, root it again. They don't like to be transferred from pond. At least that's been my experience. You know, they don't have a great time. Some can take it better than others. I think sunrise is one of those hoys that could. In general, transferring from one potting mix to another is not a great idea. And I know this because I have done it. <laughs> Learn from your mistakes takes me wrong. Never. You know, when I had root mealybugs first time, I had so many hoyas that were in orchid bark and moss, and that was a great substrate for me, but when I was dealing with root mealybugs, I couldn't find any moss. Moss you have to import here. Obviously, it's not cheap, at least not the high quality moss. So what I had to do is I had to choose something that I have available because I couldn't wait for moss to be imported. So what I had done is I moved them to LECA. Now in some cases I cut off the roots, in some cases I dipped them in insecticide. I think I should have just rerouted all of them and I moved them to LECA. I liked growing in LECA in the beginning but as, as time went by I just liked it less and less. Not that you cannot grow in LECA, you can definitely but I just was not a big fan of that situation. This is just not a great root system at all. So I stopped growing in LECA and I transferred to Pond, which, you know, has its own benefits and flaws. I think this is true for every potting mix. And where's the tag? Miro, how dare you? No, it had a tag. You know, I'm probably gonna find it when I don't look for it. Anyways, I transferred from Laka to Pawn and they didn't have a great time. I tried transferring some from Laka to Cocopeat and Perlite. Sometimes it will fail, sometimes it won't. 
I think that the failure rate is higher than the success rate. The tag is here, Miro. Remember. So, you know, I just think you should take a cutting if you can. If it's a big plant, then I would say the safest thing that you can do is transfer it to a similar potting mix in a sense that, you know, m make sure it is very airy. Don't transfer it in something that will have a lot of cocoa peat. Go maybe for half and half cocoa peat and perlite. Make sure that it is similar in its properties is what I'm trying to say. Which of your videos is the most cringy one for you. All of them. All of them are cringy for me. I did read several months ago, because I was kind of thinking about maybe doing some editing work and, you know, just thinking how much time that would be for me, for, for other people. And it says that for a minute of video, you should plan about an hour of editing. So, you know, when you see a 20 minute video, there is a great chance that I was editing that for 20 hours. Sometimes not. It depends, of course, on the content of the video. Sometimes I can do a quick edit and, you know, five or six hours, but usually not. And also, you just get so sick of looking at yourself. And I know a lot of people have said this, but really it is true. You cannot imagine the amount of flaws that you will find in yourself when you edit. I would never want anyone to edit my videos other than me. Maybe my perspective would change in the future, but like right now I cannot imagine. I just cringe at thinking anyone editing my videos, but I would say probably the earliest ones. But also some of the ones where um, I thought, you know, I was doing some skits and I thought they were funny and you know, at that time they were, and I think people don't mind them, but maybe they were a bit too weird. I cringe at a lot of stuff that I do. Is all I'm saying. I, I do things and then I regret them. Hello and welcome to my life. What is your dream vacation location? I don't ever think about holidays. I have to be honest. I am not a person who travels a lot. It's not that I don't like traveling. I just, I don't know. I don't think about it. It's, you know, it's expensive. I have a lot of plans. I have stuff to do at home all the time. I think before I went to see Betsy, the last time I went somewhere was probably like in 2016. And I think that was like in within the country. So I just don't travel a lot. Maybe I would if I had like a plethora of money. <laughs> but I'm also not one of the people that would save up for a long time and spend their last dime on a, on a trip, on traveling. I just, no. I don't do, I'm not judging anyone who does that. Great for you. I don't do that. I would rather spend it on something that I can use at home. Which, I know, it's weird. I'm not saying I'm normal. Obviously I would like to go to Southeast Asia to see Hoyas in their natural habitat. And other than that, I would just really like to visit Europe, like Sweden, Germany. I mean, I've been to France. We can go again. Netherlands, possibly Denmark. I don't think I would like to go to Belgium. People don't have a lot of nice things to say about Belgium. Even people from Belgium tell me it's boring there. So I don't know. But I would like to go to Spain, Portugal. What is your favorite Hoya Bloom? And do you think has the most pretty foliage? Ooh, that's a tough one. My favorite Hoya Bloom. I prefer Hoya flowers that are slightly larger. Waliki subspecies Tenebrosa, Danomensis subspecies Amari, um, or just, you know, Danomensis. Patella. I like Patella a lot as well. I do like smaller flowers too. Some of them are very cute, like Sigillatis has very beautiful flowers and Affinity Sigillatis. I am not very big on Finlaysoni, Callistophylla, Clemenciorum, Jennifer, Goldena, Incrisata, you know, all of those flowers. Okay, they're okay. I do like Carnosa flowers and Fungi and anything that kind of looks like it, so Hoya Lee as well. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know which one I would single as the most favorite. I'm just overthinking this right now. Thank you so much for that question. My favorite foliage... That also changes. I like a lot of the foliage on my hoes. I like Essicularis because it's so weird. I actually made a video about some of my favorite foliage. I think Callistophylla has to be one of my least favorite, actually. I just... There's so many hoes with, with veiny foliage that I'm kind of over that. I do like raised veins now. You know, that's the next thing. But Finlaysoni, Callistophylla, you know, they're nice, but I'm not holding my breath, you know. So I think right now I prefer... Veiny and wide, like some of the crosses like Svetlana or Ricardo. I think I prefer that than veiny and narrow. What's your hair secret? It's so beautiful and shiny. Thank you. 
no secret here. I just wash it. <laughs> That's it. I try not to wash it so much. I used to wash my hair um, every other day. Try to do it once a week. And then, you know, in between I just use dry shampoo. I'm gonna find like the products that I use or maybe I can just bring them. I don't know a lot about hair care, by the way. I just ask my friends and they tell me what stuff they use for their hair. Just recently, one of my friends recommended a shampoo. The shampoo that I use, and by the way, none of this is sponsored, but the shampoo I use most of the time is this one, Reuterhof shampoo. It, that's the one that I use. And I will use a conditioner every time I shampoo, you know, leave it in, comb my hair, because if I don't comb my hair while, while it's still wet with the conditioner on, it just, I don't know, it didn't tangle before, but now because it's longer, it does. So I, I comb it through. It is 99% natural origin. Um, I think this is actually vegan, or supposed to be. Yeah, it is vegan. It has a stamp. Faith in Nature Coconut Conditioner. That's the one that I use. Every other washing I will change with this. This is Duracost Technique um, Ultra Soothing Shampoo uh, by Vichy, by however you pronounce that. So I'll use that every other shampooing. That's, by the way, the recent one. And then, uh, again, every other shampooing I will change between these two. One is Kreuterhof Hair Mask, and that's just way too bright. Hopefully you can see something. And then the next is Amino Keratin. It's also some type of a keratin mask. I don't really know why, but that's what my friends recommended. And, you know, I suppose they know. And I will use also dry shampoo, Batiste. This is, I think, also French. That's what we have here. And I will use that probably on the third day and then on the fourth day. And on the fifth day, when my hair starts to look like I came out from the 17th century painting, it's time to wash it again. Talk about hydrophobic soil and whether to repot or not. Uh, you can just hydrate it by, I think, watering from bottom. I you mean, you're asking me? Look at that. This is so dry and hydrophobic at this point. I do think it's probably better to repot. Try to hydrate, but I would just repot. And this is why I'm doing this today. This is turned hydrophobic. I just don't know what I was thinking with so much perlite. All right, it is an eternity later and I am ready to pot my violets and continue with the questions. Now, I have forgotten where I have stopped so I'm just sorry about that. If you had to grow only one plant the genus and it could not be Hoya, what would you choose? Emily, thank you for that question. It would be orchids. I think it would be orchids, even though I don't have many orchids at all right now. I just feel it would be orchids because there is just such a lot of possibility with them. I used to have many more and then um, I, I think some people wonder sometimes where my orchids have gone to. And the answer is trash, because they had a virus. Essentially, one of the orchids was infected, and I didn't know until it was too late, until it had started to spread everywhere. I mean everywhere, to, to all the other orchids. And it was just too late. So I'm just gonna put the violets kind of like this in these cups. Know, gently and hope they will root it's gonna be a lot of violets do you still feel the same passion for life for youtube for hoyas for hoyas yes <laughs> i do i do feel still still the same it just you know there are moments of your life when i ain't gonna lie we, you don't feel so great right you don't feel so great and i definitely feel 2020 was that for me not just because of the P word. It's not an unfortunate choice of, of language there, Miro, is it? By the way, I think that word, no one is saying it on YouTube because I think you get demonetized or something, which is absolutely ridiculous and insane to me. Oh no. Problem is that I'm just putting these violets and leaving the tags behind. What, what the heck, Miro? I don't know who this is. I'm just gonna assume this is this one. Where was I? I felt I had I had a story there. Sometimes you will go through periods where you're just not gonna feel like you want to have any, and I have gone through that in 2020, and I had plans many, many years before, but it, it was just unrelated to the P word. It was just, you know, 
general, I don't know, I wouldn't say it was depression, but it lasted for several months, so it probably was. And I didn't feel like growing plants at all. And it was very difficult to make myself water them, and you know what, a lot of them did suffer from that period. And I think if you look back at the timeline, my, like my friends know this, my closest people know this, but there have been times when I haven't been so active on YouTube. Not, not always, but in most cases in the past, not now, but in, you know, I think in 2021 and 2020, <laughs> those were usually the periods where I wasn't feeling very good, where I had things happening in my private life. Um, my, my dad was hospitalized and my mom to mom she wasn't hospitalized but she was ill and i just you know it was it was a tough period and you know also i don't know for whatever reason the heat waves got to me a lot i just felt because it was really horrible it was i mean it sounds ridiculous now when i say it but i remember because i didn't have air conditioning in this room still and i had a whole lot of plants i would wake up in the morning crying because it was already 40 degrees and we didn't have rain this was i think in 2021 we didn't have rain for like a whole month and every day i would wake up in sweat it was awful awful i would wake up in sweat i would wake up tired i know this sounds way too dramatic you know get a grip and whatever but but anyways i think someone also asked how to get through those uh, periods and I think that deserves a separate video. I'm not a professional on it But I think I could offer some advice or you know some things that have helped me I don't know if that video would be fun for people to watch I think a, a lot of the times people also want uplifting videos, which is fine. I get that but I think in plant community You know you come to the to the YouTube to the YouTube. I sound like I have a thousand years you come to YouTube to be uplifted, and I think in the case of my channel, some people come to learn new things about Hoya. I understand that that type of content is not for everyone. I think a lot of people have been vocal in the past. I saw comments on other people's channels, you know, I'm not here for that type of content, which, I don't know, I feel it's a bit insensitive. Like, at the end of the day, it's that person's channel. You cannot police them what they can talk about on their own channel. I generally have strong feelings about YouTube and comments, and I never went into it. I, again, I get very, very nice comments most of the time. Sometimes there will be, like, a weird comment. Not, like, uh, a mean comment, but just weird. Like, sometimes people will say, a way too long of a video. Just skip rewind or whatever because if i make a long video people complain how long it is if i make a short video people say how short it is and can't please everyone i mean i think one time i got a comment saying i can't believe how annoying your voice is and i'm like okay thanks for sharing that goodbye <laughs> i typically don't reply i never delete these i think one person has deleted their comment because someone was following the comments and it, like, you didn't attack him, but it was kind of like, go away, basically was the gist. And I agreed with that. I think I even like that comment. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna take a look in couple of, at a couple of more questions, and I think we can be done there. I'm gonna water them and put these in prop box, because most of them are rootless. The light is going off. That means, Miro, shut up! When you started making videos, did you intend on fueling Hoya addiction across the globe? No, that was not my intention. Oh my gosh. I really had no sense of direction when I was starting my YouTube videos, to be quite honest. And I think you can see that. I just, I felt, first of all, that I couldn't really be myself, which, you know, is obviously awkward a lot of the times. <laughs> but I just felt I couldn't really be myself, so I tried to be someone who I'm not, which is like a calm person that is always very knowledgeable and always, I mean, I do research stuff most of the time and I'm very mindful of things I say. But am I a calm person? No. <laughs> Calmness left the room a long time ago. And I, I had no idea that I would ever turn into a Hoya channel. I really wish I wasn't only a Hoya channel, but it's kind of too late for that. Because, you know, what am I going to talk about? I mean, in terms of plants, I have plenty of other topics. But like, in terms of plants, what am I going to talk about? I have thought about talking about other topics, I would like to be able to. And by other topics, I mean maybe sometimes non-plant related topics. And I just never know 
you know, is that something that I should do on this other channel? I have said many, many times I'm going to start a different channel. And just so you know, I'm not going to tell anyone about this other channel because that's how I started my channel. I don't know if I ever said this, but none of my friends knew about the channel. No one knew. I think they only found out when I had like 3,000 subscribers or something like that. No one knew in the beginning. I didn't tell anyone. And that is the story behind my name, Daisy Plants. Because there is no way that you can connect Daisy to Miro. And that is why I picked Daisy. Rude! Okay, I'm gonna just shut up very quickly. So this is gonna be the last question. I just, I'm not gonna turn on the lights. It's gonna be way too difficult. It's kind of intimate. Do you feel we are better friends now because we're talking in near dark? What was I talking about? I always forget. Yeah, I didn't want anyone to find out and I still don't really know. Actually, I do know why. I, that's a lie. It's because I used to have a channel 10 years ago that was not about plants. It's probably something I shouldn't mention. Oh, the channel is gone. But I was still in high school and some people from my school have found the channel and they didn't like it, which is fine right? You're allowed not to like the channel. But what they had done is they had relentlessly bullied me, left me messages that I should go and off myself, right? And then it didn't end there, but they would publicly say that whenever they would see me in town, in school. You know, it wasn't a great experience. It was just after I came back from my exchange. And obviously when you are, you know, under 18, it's, you know, Teenagers are not very stable, right? <laughs> Those things can be very difficult to hear. Now I'll be like, you know, whatever. I really hope they all fit in one prop box, and they're gonna go back on top of that Rodsta cabinet. And I have saved some of the leaves, which I hope can be planted all in the same prop box as well. All right, that is the end for this video. Very dramatic. <laughs> I'm so sorry about the light. I think it gives us like a nice mood. So, you know, no, it's not. I'm sorry. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment down below if you have any more questions about Hoyas. I'm so sorry I didn't get to reply to all of the questions, but I have been sitting and talking here a lot. One of them has been about my love life as well. And all I'm going to say about that is... It's been 84 years. So yeah, that is very nice. It's going really well. And yeah... I am going to shut up now. Again, don't forget to leave the thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. I don't really know why you wouldn't. I mean, look at that sexy vibe with all the plants. You want to be subscribed. Have a wonderful weekend. We are going to come back soon. By we, I mean me and the fantastic lighting. See you next time. Goodbye. I would like to take some time to thank my patrons. A massive shout out to my $5 patrons. My three anonymous patrons, Alex von Siebenthal, Anne Margaret Moen, Angela Bernard, Angela Parrish, NC, Ashley Hoyas, Becky Higgins, Beth Gibson, Betsy, Danub Daniels, Daria Kaminska, Diane Sikorsky, Farah, Gina Geise, Go Green Tropical, Heather Uppenkamp, Hoji Scott, Halsplin Heather, Hoya Heather, Yana Griffin, Jessica Chio, Kara, Casey Gross Hoyas, Kelly Koo, Kelso, Kristen Sherwood, Leplanda Steph, Mandy Milliken, Marcel Har, Mars B, Martina Alif Perday, Marty Miller, Mary Rose, Melissa Walker, Michael Curley, Nicole Ferranti, Mirka Grunrus, Nelly Yang, Nicole Moreau, Nicole and Caleb of Schleif Tropicals, Nita Macy, PJ, Robin L. Jennings, Sherry Kumar, Stephanie H2O, Stephanie Zili May, Sybil Williams, Tanya, Tessa Martins, The Swedish Hoya Dude, Tia B, TJWO, Wendy, Wendy Foreman, Wendy Rossman, Yuta the Wallamut, Zordorama, and Zlokov Nipponi. Also, a big thank you to my $3 patrons, Angelina Farnan, Anne Margaret, Anna Kay, Brenda Little, Brenna B, Brana Phillips, Kilone, Christina Greengrass, Claudia L, Fluffy Blue Sheep, Jerry's Garden, Lisa Helling, Morgan Kennedy, Nella, Nerdy Kathy, Plan Druid, Plantalania, Ringlov, and Tang Watanas Riakul. Also, a thank you to my $1 patrons, Brandon Pacheco, Carrie, Kari, Constance, Emilia Bronson, Jacinta, Jolie Sullivan, Kayla Vavra, Lauren M, Lori Ansubramanium, Luzman Fernandez, Neely Spicer, and Olivia Chill Mueller. Thank you all so much for your incredible support. Have a wonderful week, and I will see you very soon.